Hi there, everybody. Happy New Year to you. I hope that you're enjoying getting back into Revelation or starting for the first time if you're in a new group. Either way, uh, way to go. This is going to be rewarding, I believe, if we do the hard work of interpretation as we go through these chapters. I really enjoy those videos that we've been showing that are summaries from the Bible Project with the artwork. And <clears throat> I really appreciate the balanced approach that they take, which um, for the most part, I, I really resonate with the interpretive approach they're taking. And as we've dis uh, discovered, there are numerous different angles and, and viewpoints on how to interpret Revelation. So we're going to be careful and humble as we go through this. But uh, we're going to also see that this is an exciting book that applies to our lives. Now we're in chapter 6 and 7 in this study, the seven seals. And incidentally, that's the place where a lot of people stop reading the book of Revelation. And a lot of preachers stop preaching because it gets pretty um, in-depth and sometimes difficult, especially as we go farther in. So it, there's these seven seals. Jesus, the Lamb, is opening these seals that signify the countdown of history until the, the final judgment. Not chronological detailed events, but, but generalities of what this world is going to be like in the conflict between good and evil. So there's a white horse and a red horse one and a black horse and a pale horse, the four horsemen of the apocalypse, which we've all heard about, whether we studied Revelation or not, pretty much. And they represent conquest and, and war and famine and hunger and disease and death. And these are indicators that we live in a broken world. The first century Christians were experiencing these things, but they've been a part of every generation. And so basically, uh, in a broken world, these things happen and we've got to figure out how to hang on through it all. Because there's, it's not going to be easy. There's going to be some suffering. And so when we get to the, the fifth seal before the sixth, which is judgment, and the seventh is in chapter eight, after a little interlude here in chapter seven, there is this prayer of the martyrs. They're crying out to God and they're saying, how long until you you avenge our blood. How long until you vindicate us? How long until you bring justice? Uh, that's an interesting prayer that has been prayed throughout the generations. You go back to Psalm, a lot, Psalms, a lot of the Psalms have prayers that start with, How long, Lord? When are, you going to, when are you going to step up and help me? My enemies are against me and it's not fair. I don't know how many of you play chess, but if you play chess, um, it's it's a complicated game, and, and there comes a time where it's over for one of three reasons. Either um, you get checkmate, you won legitimately, you took out the other guy's king, or you get stalled and you both just to, to decide it's a draw because it doesn't seem like there's any way out and, and you're out of time. Or you could just blow your cool, kick the whole thing over, and stomp away. <laughs> Probably not a, a very good idea. You might need some anger management classes if you're doing stuff like that. But some people think that's how God should handle all the brokenness and problems in this world. Just kick the game over and, and start over. But he has a very clear strategy. He's not going to lose his cool. He's not going to quit. He is going to get to checkmate. And in fact, Jesus on the cross did so when he, dis, when he destroyed the devil. He didn't destroy the devil, but he defeated the devil. Someday, though, he's going to destroy the devil and, and remove sin and evil from this world. And then the game, and it's not just a game, it's, it's, a, serious, it's a serious struggle between good and evil. Then it'll be over, but it'll be over on God's timing. So you might think about in your group discussing what are some circumstances in your life that have um, influenced you to, to question or ask God why or to say, how long, Lord, until you vindicate me? I, I, there's things happening that aren't fair. When are you going to make it fair? Well, Revelation assures us over and over that there is a day of fairness coming. But until that day, we need to be patient and we need to persevere and we need to continue to be confident of what we're going to read here in the last part of chapter 7 where there's these beautiful promises reapplied from the Old Testament of how God is going to make it all right someday. And so as you, if, if you get to chapter 7 in your study, concentrate on a few words here towards the end. Words like um, shelter. God says he will, be a sh he will shelter us with his presence. I love that. Um, words like shepherd. Verse 17 says the lamb will be our shepherd. 
throughout eternity. Um, notice where the Lamb is, too. Verse 17, at the center of the throne. Chapter 7, verse 17. And it's my prayer that the Lamb, that is Jesus, will be at the, not only at the center of the throne, where he is, but at the center of the throne in my heart, <laughs> at the center of, the, of my family, and at the center of our church, at the center of all things that um, I'm involved in. And I, that's my prayer for you and for your group and for your family. God bless. Now, some people think that the three sets of seven divine judgments represent a literal, linear sequence of events that either happened in the past, or could be happening now, or are yet to happen in the future when Jesus returns. But notice how John has woven all the sevens together. So, the final seven bowls come out of the seventh trumpet and the seventh seal. And the seven trumpets emerge from the seventh seal. They're like nesting dolls. Each seventh contains the next seven. Also, notice how each of the series of seven culminates in the final judgment, and they have matching conclusions. So, it's more likely that John is using each set of seven to depict the same period of time between Jesus' resurrection and future return from three different perspectives. So, the slain lamb begins to open the scroll's first four seals, and John sees four horsemen. It's an image from the book of Zechariah chapter 1, and they symbolize times of war, conquest, famine, and death. In other words, a tragically average day in human history. Then the fifth seal depicts the murdered Christian martyrs before God's heavenly throne, and the cry of their innocent blood rises up before God like smoke from the altar of incense. And they're told to rest, because more Christians are yet to die. We're not told why, but we are told that it won't last forever. The sixth seal is God's ultimate response to their cry. He brings the great day of the Lord that was described in Isaiah and Joel, and the people of the earth cry out, who is able to stand? And then all of a sudden, John pauses the action with an intermission to answer that question. John sees an angel with a signet ring coming to place a mark of protection on God's servants who are enduring all this hardship. And he hears the number of those who are sealed, 144,000. It's a military census, like the one in the book of Numbers chapter 1. There are 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, pay attention. The number of this army is what John heard, just like he heard about the conquering lion of Judah. But in both cases, what he then turned and saw was the surprising fulfillment of those military images in Jesus, the slain lamb. So, when he sees this messianic army of God's kingdom, it's made up of people from all nations, fulfilling God's ancient promise to Abraham. It's this multi-ethnic army of the lamb who can stand before God because they've been redeemed by the lamb's blood. And now, they are called to conquer, not by killing their enemies, but by suffering and bearing witness just like the lamb. After this, the seventh and final seal is broken. But before the scroll is opened, the seven warning trumpets emerge and fire is taken from the incense altar. It symbolizes the cry of the martyrs and it's cast onto the earth, bringing the day of the Lord to its completion.